Hello everybody, in this video I guide you through a recording and a mixing session. We are recording the Silvan Shorey Trio with Nadav Ehrlich on bass and the great unbelievable Jeff Ballard on the drum kit. And let's start right away with the drum kit. Now the most important thing on a drum is that you get a great drum sound on your overhead microphones and those here are M49s from Neumann. I know, extremely expensive vintage microphone. If you don't have such microphones at your disposal, you could use some Soyuz 017 FET. I like those a lot. You could use FLIA microphones, there are other options. But uh, M49 is actually an unbelievable overhead microphone for jazz drum. Now, a mistake that a lot of engineers are doing, they try to record the cymbals with the overhead microphone and they think that actually uh, it is about high frequencies and they cut basses away and I don't know what they do. However, the secret of great jazz overhead sound is that whatever the drummer is doing, be it snare, drums, all this must sound, all this must sound great on the overhead microphone. So to me, overhead microphone has nothing to do with getting cymbals right, it's about getting the entire drum kit right. And then even higher, we have over overhead microphones and in this room they work really nice because they record the sustain nicely, they round it up. I like those mics a lot. It's Brulon Care 4006, that's very similar to DPA microphones. Then um, the spot mics are not really used a lot, here is the snare microphone, that's a Soyuz 013. And I use a small diaphragm mic here because I just need a little bit of precision and if it uses the brushes it should sound nice and there is anyway not a lot of place here. On the Tom Toms we have the Sennheiser MD421. Also on the floor Tom I use those. And there is a lot of discussion about should you use dynamic microphones or condenser microphone. On a jazz drum I usually prefer dynamic microphones because if you would use a condenser mic here then you would have an ugly sounding bleed of the cymbals and then you can anyway not really use it. And if you use a dynamic microphone the bleed of the cymbal is just really not so much a problem. And as we anyway use the overhead mic as the main mics and we have the Tom Toms great on the overhead microphones. All we need is a little bit attack. And then on the bass drum, finally, we use Neumann U47 FET microphone, which I always think that's a great bass drum mic. I like this a lot and yeah, that's really one of the best microphone for bass drum. And then the hi-hat, we forgot the hi-hat. There is just a Neumann KM80 for this little thing here, old one. I actually almost never use the hi-hat microphone in jazz because as I said, our overhead microphone record the entire drum kit anyway. So actually you should not use the hi-hat microphone, but maybe you never know the guitar player composed like a, a more pop piece, whatever. He maybe suddenly starts to play a trip hop beat. You never know in jazz. Jazz is everything. And so I always have the hired microphone just in case I need it, I can always blend it in. On the bass, we use that great Nyberg M1 microphone, which I think is one of the best tube mics that you can buy with money today. The bass sounded huge on that mic and that will be the main sound of the bass. Myberg M1. It's really a great microphone and um, yeah, you will see it then uh, where it's placed in relation to the bass player. This area 20 here is in front of the F hole and that's just to get a lot of energy in case we have some tunes where the drummer plays really loud then maybe we have less drum here and more bass here but it won't sound as good as this Myberg. And to round it up, I have this uh, fret mic that just records um, a little bit more the highs of the bass and then you have a little bit more uh, natural sound. So here's the guitar amp, we separated that one with walls. We recorded with a B 
V30A bottle microphone. This is this huge long microphone that's actually also called Hitler bottle because Hitler used those microphones it's from 1928. So at the yeah, a very, very early technology and it sounds just really, really good. Um, because it's so old, I also placed a Soyuz a small diaphragm microphone, so in case there would be any technical problem with the old microphone, we just have another one as a backup. And then we have a second amplifier in another room. So in that room here, we actually have a second guitar amp, a nice Fender twin reverb. That one obviously has a little bit more character than the other guitar amp. We record it with a Royer because the Fender has a lot of high frequency content and with the Royer mic it's nice and warm. And most likely in the mix we will mix both amps together. So we have the neutral one from Silvan and we have the amp with a lot of character here and together that's a nice guitar sound. <laughs> As you see, everybody in one room, just some walls to separate, great microphones, and then you have to get a great rough mix. And let's now see what the musicians are thinking. So Silvan, you just listened to the rough mix of this mm. recording the very first time. Uh, how was it? How did you like it? Yeah, I really liked it. Um, uh, so everything sounds really clear. Um, and especially the guitar sound with those two amps that we record and the acoustic sound is just Sounds, sounds amazing and of course the drums um, also while playing is really comfortable just to hear everything really clearly and yeah it's just perfect so jeff you just listened to the mix of this recording did you like it oh i loved it it was great i was actually quite uh, surprised by the the sound that you got from the sound that that i hear here it sounded much more live in the in the studio. Yeah. That's a very good sign. Man, I love it. Are you capturing the, the yeah. sound living in the room? A absolutely. That's and then I hands a little, little, little bit bass on those. Most engineers cut away the bass. I don't know why. I don't yeah. know what they are hearing because, I mean, you need, you play the things and you need bass energy. You need yeah, size. Exactly. Uh, that's you need so. Spectrum. Yeah. You need the spectrum, man. I mean, and then it's a round tone. Absolutely. 